find the X and Y intercepts. So if we look at the poster, this is in standard form. So you have AX plus BY equals C. So A is 10, B is negative 30, C is 150. So the X intercept, the Y value is zero. And notice over there it says the X intercept is C divided by A. So 150 <laughs> divided by 10. cross it out. As it turns out, it's just going to be 15. B is not 0, it's negative 30. B is negative 30. Uh, it has a 0, but uh, there's a 3 in front. All right. So now what we need is the y-intercept, so the x value is 0. Uh, notice with the y-intercept, all we're going to do is take the c value divided by b because it's on the poster, so it's 150 divided by negative 30, zeros cross, it's negative 5. Number two is the same idea. x-intercept has a y-value of 0, y-intercept has an x-value of 0, okay? So... <clears throat> Uh, for the x-intercept, you take the c divided by a, which is 28 divided by negative 4, which is negative, negative 7. seven. Negative <clears throat> for the y-intercept, you've got the c value divided by the b value, 28 divided by negative 7, negative, negative four. 4, done. So you can see we have this table over here, and we got this graph, so yes, there's going to be some graphing. The metal must travel at a rate of about five miles per second. Screaming fast. It's almost as fast as me. The table shows the total distance, D, that the craft covers in certain periods of time, T. So it did give us this table. The table shows... Right now, algebraic expression, just, it's saying write an equation, okay? Now it says t, we're going to use x instead. Yeah. Okay, all of our equations should be y equals something x, but you don't have to, okay? Uh, so, uh, we need to know about independent and dependent variables here. So, if we look at this, we have time and we have distance. Which of these depends on the other? Yes. That is correct. Very good, Drew. See, the distance you go will depend on how many seconds have passed because notice this says five miles per second. It's always the dependent per independent. Okay? So whenever you see the word per, like a cat, per, per. it's a per independent variable. Additionally, some of you will know this is time. Time is always independent. Just, it's just independent. It's time, all right? So independent is x, dependent is y. All right? So if we look at this, uh, to write the equation, we have y equals the slopage times x. Very good. Plus the y-intercept. Plus five. Why do you have to put the y-intercept in parentheses? I don't know. All right. So what is the slope of this? Well, let's find out. So let me see here. The change in y is plus five. Change in x, plus one. So we have y equals the slope, which is five over one, x, Plus, what's the y-intercept? Now, some of you remember this equation that we can use for the y-intercept. Y-intercept equals the y-value minus slopage times the x-value. So, which of these do we want to use? Well, let's use the top one because it's the easiest. It has a 1. All right. So we're just going to replace these values. The y-intercept is equal, the y-value was 5 
minus the sloppage, which we found to be 5. And the x value was 1. So 5 minus 5 times 1 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Bam, 0. Do we need the plus 0 there? No, it doesn't have to be there. But I have it there, so we're going to keep it. You guys, don't make this too complicated when you describe, because on a test, you're going to have to describe it. All right? So, describe it in words. Five miles per second. Done. Hey, uh, it says to graph these ordered pairs, and on one of the tests, it asked for, it gave you a graph like this, but no one put the labels. So, a lot of people miss points. And each label is a point. Okay, well, the x-axis represents our independent, which we already figured out to be time. Okay, so this is time in seconds. So what's our y-axis? It's the dependent variable, which in this case is distance. Okay, now that we have these labeled, now let's graph, okay? So these are all coordinate pairs as it turns out, which is nice about vertical tables. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so cool. Vertical pairs, uh, vertical tables, coordinate pairs. Okay, so let's graph 1, 5, right here. 2, 10, 3, 15, 14, 5, 25. I can't fit any of the other ones on there, done. Okay. Now, right now, I'm not going to connect these dots because uh, later on, you'll have to figure out if you need to connect them or not. This one, we would want to connect, but later on, we'll fig you'll, you'll learn how to know. All right? All right. So, will you connect it? Or should we not connect it? Connect so it? I, on this one, I don't care. You'll eventually learn. All right, so a coordinate cable charges 320, 32, 50 a month for basic cable TV. It's just an example. Each premium channel selected costs an additional 495 per month. Okay, so this is our rate. So it's 495. The equation will have 495. It's going to be multiplied by our variable, which we're going to use x. Okay, monthly cost, number of premium channels, which is x now. All right. But in addition, in addition to that, it's going to add the 3250 for the basic cable, all right? Each pre write an equation to find the total monthly cost. That is the monthly cost, which we're going to use Y for, not C. So this X is not part of the equation, okay? Yes, another good question, Evan. So how we can know which one is uh, dependent and independent is, notice this one is dollars, this one is, this, this one is dollars per month, right? It's always per independent variable. Plus month is a form of time, which is always independent, okay? So dollars is dependent, month is independent. Okay, well now that we have this equation, make a table to show the monthly cost for 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 premium channels. Well, uh, let's make the table first, so then we'll graph this. So here's our table. Vertical tables are good because X is always going on the left, Y's are on the right, which will give you immediate order pairs. Additionally, it tells us X is months and Y is the number of channels. Okay? And it told us it wants the price for... 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 premium channels, all right? So if I get no premium channels, we use the equation. All right, so we just use the equation for all these, all right? So if I replace x with 0, what's 495 times 0? Zero? 0. 0 plus 3250? 3250. 3250. So in this case, for 0... Uh, the cost, this is cost, not channels, so, this is cost, and this one is channels, okay, so this is 32.50, all right, okay, yes, is the x always on the left of the table, uh, yes, for vertical tables, that is correct,
All right, uh, now what we need is... All right, now notice uh, on this next one, to the next one. Well, now instead of zero, we're going to replace this with one. So 495 times one. You can put this in the calculator as well. It's probably easier. 495 times 1 is 495 plus 3250 is, I don't know what it is, uh, 45 80, cents. 3745. Uh, actually, $37.45. Oh, I thought we were adding 45 things too. All right. Now that we have that one, let's do the next one. So we're going to put a 2 in there. So 495 times 2. Oh, it's 990 plus 3250. Oh, I don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, hopefully you guys have a calculator can figure it out. All right. So what is that? A 0 and a 3. Uh, is there 8. So two forty two thirty. Forty. Forty. Thank you. Forty two forty. Yeah. All right. Now some of you may realize as well. You could just use a slope for this, which is four ninety five. So you just uh, do it again, or you just use the equation and plug in the three now. So it's another uh, four ninety five. So now we're at thirty five right here. Yeah. Very good. 47.35. Uh, now instead of a 3, you'd put in a 4. 495 times 4 plus 32.50. And it's... 52.30. Yeah, 52.30. 52.30. Now that we have the table, we can graph this. Uh, what did my y-axis represent? What, what are my y-values representing? Cost. It's cost. Very good. So we have cost, yeah. And channel. And so independent was channels. Very good. Channels. Chanel. I may have spelled that wrong. I don't know. You spelled it right. Whatever. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Uh, now we look at the first value. That was at 0 and 32.50, which would be right about here. Yeah. Okay. Now, since we don't know what that value is, we do need to label it at 0 and 32.50. My next point is 1 and 37.45, so 37.45 is right here. Yeah. Okay, it's labeled. The next one is 2 and 42.40, uh, 42.40 right about here. Yeah. 2 and 42.40, it's not a decimal. And the next one is 3 and 47.35, so right about here. Yeah. And finally, the last one is uh, 4 and 52.30, uh, 4 and 52.30, right up in here. Yeah. All right, there's a graph. Also, I'm not going to connect the points yet on this one. I'm not going to connect the points on this one. Again, you'll learn why later, some other time. It really doesn't matter because all we're dealing with right now is linear equations. There we go. Come on. Yeah. All right, so this table shows the number of liters in quarts of liquid. Uh, it wants an equation. So, again, the first thing you need is to find the slope and then the y-intercept. nice thing about most of these is they are all proportional. Do you guys remember the two conditions you need for proportionality? Yeah. Linear and through the origin. Very good. If it goes through the origin, it means your y-intercept is... It's linear. Proportional. Equal. If, it go, if it's proportional, if it goes through the origin, it means that your y-intercept is 
Zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Liar. <laughs> All right. The thing about this is after you make the equation for this one, which is right down, it wants to know how many liters are in eight quarts. So since Q is quarts, you're just going to replace Q with eight and then solve. Uh, make sure you label these as well because if they're not labeled, minus points. In, the, in this book especially, the x values are always on the left, y's are on the right. Okay, so let's write the equation. First thing we do need is some sloppage. So let's find some slop. Well, from 450 to 9 would be plus 450. Okay, and from 1 to 2, plus 1. So we found our sloppage at 450. Okay, so we have the, the equation y equals sloppage. 450x. Plus, now we need the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the equation again. Maybe you can see this on this poster. So it's the y-value minus sloppage times the corresponding x-value. So in this table, we need to figure out which, which of the coordinate pairs we want to use. One and 450. All right, one and 450 is the easiest one, right? Is that one you're going to say? Yeah. Yes, very good, Emily. So let's use 1 and 450. So we have this equals, the y value is 450 minus sloppage, which we found is 450. What's the x value? Yeah. 1. 450 minus 450 times 1? One. 1. That is 0. So this is 0. This is our equation. All right, now we're going to use the equation to figure out how much it costs for 15 tickets. So we've got y equals 450x, but x is the number of tickets, so we're going to replace that with 15. We don't need the plus 0 because it's, we're going to make it a phantom 0. So 450 times 15, 50, 75, 67, 50, sure. So y equals 67.50 in dollars. Bam. Yeah, it did say that it wanted the description in words. There you go. Each ticket's 450. Done. All right. So the equation on this, we do need the sloppage. So let's find our change in. Why? Well, this goes from 17 to 34, which means it went up by 17. Okay, and then it went to the right one. So our sloppage would be 17 over Nine. one. All right. Now this means we've got y equals so y equals 17 over one x. All right. Quick way to figure out if this is proportional. What, what is, it, what's the y-intercept if it's proportional? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Well, y-intercept if it's proportional is zero. Very good. So all we got to do is take the sloppage, and we look at our first point, 17 and one. We take the y and divide it by the x. If it's the same as your sloppage, it's proportional. Done. So if we save 500 tons of recycling paper, we're going to use the equation y equals, I'm just going to put 17 times the 500 tons of paper. Which is 8,500. Sounds good. Double it. Now, as it turns out, this is not just 8,500. What is it? It's 8,500 trees. Trees. I said that. All right, and you guys, the nice thing about this, you guys have dealt with all these. The one that people hate the most is words because, I don't know, maybe it's because they have a hard time reading? Yeah, I do. Or, yeah, right? Sometimes... Reading the words is too much work, so you're like, ah, I don't want to do it. In any case, you guys know, well, tables, graphs, hopefully, and equations. 
Okay. Judging by some of the tests I've graded, though, some of you struggle with graphs as well. I don't. You guys need to fix this because you just you need to do it. You're going to be doing a lot of it. Okay. Okay, Chloe competes in a jump rope competition. Her average rate is 225 jumps per minute. All right, based on this rate, jumps per minute, which of these is independent? Cambria. Minutes, excellent. Why would we say that minutes is, this is the independent? Grant? Very good. Oh, so right? Good. Dependent per independent. Excellent work. And it gave us the equation. That's cool. Then we make a table out of it. Uh, don't worry about this middle column. And then you graph. Yay. All right. I think this is just a. Oh, you guys start on the homework, though.